you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. So in this module, we're now going to go through the installation, setup, configuration, and provisioning of N plus one operation within the Ruckus IoT controller. N plus one is a feature that allows for larger networks to be deployed and to provide a primary and secondary IoT controller. So the, the architecture is designed so that you have a, a normally running IoT controller with a backup and failover secondary controller in case there is a network or an, an issue within your installation where the primary controller goes offline. The secondary controller can immediately take over and ensure no loss of operation or uh, data happens as a result. The system ensures that uh, failover happens by synchronizing the primary and secondary. So the, pr the primary controller is normally uh, taking all of the load and interface and configuration and management of the network with any changes made on the primary automatically duplicated into the secondary controller. And then if the, uh, there is a failover or a failure within the primary controller, the secondary immediately takes over the role of primary and uh, carries on operation as normal. This is normally used uh, to improve network redundancy and reliability. So it's, it's ideally suited for applications where you have a large number of uh, IoT gateways or access points and you know, many Zigbee devices where it's much, much easier to, uh, to have the system fail over and provide redundancy than it is to go back in and reinstall and manually configure devices. So in this way, it ensures minimum downtime and ensures uh, maximum uh, reliability within the, uh, the deployed network. To deploy N plus one, there are a couple of considerations and configuration options that need to be taken into account. If you look at the two major controllers, you have a primary and a secondary. So in the example configuration that we're going to run through, the primary controller is on IP address 192.168.111.51 and the secondary is on 52. So they, they do need to be on the same subnet network and directly able to communicate with each other at an SSH level so that the settings from one can be copied to the other. They also need to have se separate host names. So in my configuration, I'm going to use Riot Primary and Riot Secondary. They also need to have their network clocks synchronized. So the, the two servers need to communicate reliably and regularly. So we need to either ensure that they have a local set network time that is very accurate, or we need to synchronize them to an external network time server. So in, in this particular example, we're going to use a third party Google time server. And then additionally, the controller is also going to need a second IP address uh, or an IP port, which is used for the virtual machine communications between the primary and secondary. So in this particular case, we're going to use an IP address ending in 6.1. The other considerations to consider, as I mentioned, regarding IP addresses, network and host names is that the two controllers need to be running the same IoT controller version. So uh, the primary and secondary in our example, we're going to be running 151 IoT controller release, but this would be the same if whichever version you are, are running, you need to make sure they're both running the same uh, controller versions. And then finally, you need to make sure that the SSH connection for the IoT controllers is enabled. So this is a setting within the IoT controllers administration panel that you need to ensure that you have SSH enabled so that the two controllers can communicate with each other. Some deployments, you may want to turn that off for security reasons, even though it is protected by a certificate and also by a credential login. Uh, but in this situation, we will need to ensure that we have SSH enabled. So now we're going to spin up both of our IoT controllers. So we need a primary and a secondary. So the first one is on 192.168.111.51. And you can see this one has now booted up. So we will bring up and install this one as normal. And so this is exactly the same as any other installation of the IoT controller. So we've got a connection. So we will accept that. And we're just waiting for the services now to boot up. And now we're back into our initialization. So within plus one, there are some additional things that we need to set up 
to ensure stable operation. So the first thing we need to do is obviously go and configure our setup. So the first thing we need is different host names. So we're going to call this one Riot Primary, just for arbitrary sake. Uh, we need to set up our time zone again. So this is uh, Europe and London in my case. Uh, we also need to, because we're now setting up uh, N plus one, they always need to be able to find each other. So we could use DHCP with static uh, configuration, or we could just manually set the IP address. So we're going to manually set in this particular case. So if, because this is my primary, I'm going to use that IP address. We need to set the subnet, uh, gateway address, in my case, and DNS server. I'm using DNS relay, so I'll forward that in there. Okay, and then the last thing we must make sure we do is we have a synchronization of times between uh, both the controller primary and secondary controller. So here we need to use a, a, a time sync or a network timing protocol sync source. So I'm going to use the Google time server. Uh, we could also use the Ruckus time server or any others. So it's really important that you get those three settings are correctly configured for, for the configuration for the options. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to define our password for our administration and we're going to need to use this to configure the N plus one in the next step. So we're going to, so this is our admin password. I'm going to set up my uh, username and password as I've done here and we can now save that. So now we can accept that configuration and uh, start the system to now reboot. So while that's rebooting, we'll now go ahead and do the same thing for the second IoT controller server which is going to be our secondary or our N plus one secondary server. So as before, we've now started up our second IoT controller. So you can see we have the MAC address here of ABAB02, and you can see it's now uh, listed uh, as VWrite. So we'll do exactly the same thing that we did for our primary now for our secondary. So we'll bring up another window and we will now access that server, .111.52 for this server. And we just need to now wait for that to come up. Okay, and again, so we have our connection indication, so we now have access to our controller. So now, here we are, so this is our second IoT controller now uh, that we're going to configure as our N plus one secondary server, our backup server. So again, we can click through on the next. We need to now define the name, so as we did before, but we, again, we need to give it a different name because the two devices need to be able to communicate with each other. We need to set our IP addresses, our subnet, our gateway, and our DNS server. Uh, as before, we need to set up our time zone and we also need to set up our NTP. And again, we need to make sure these two are synchronized. So we need to use the same uh, NTP server that we used for the primary server. So I'm going to use the Google time server again. So we hit next on that. We now need to enter our password. Now we can use a different password that we used on the other server. There's no reason why not. But in this particular case, I'm going to use the same and we can now go ahead and start. Obviously, we'll read our terms and conditions. Yes, that all looks fine. And we click accept on that. So while that server is now also rebooting, we'll now prepare, go back and start looking and preparing our configuration for our N plus one primary and secondary servers. Okay, so now both of our uh, primary and secondary uh, IoT controllers have rebooted. We can now go ahead and uh, onboard devices, sensors, etc., as needed. So what we'll do is we'll log in using the credentials that we created uh, at startup or when we were initializing. Now you can see here we're actually connected to our primary IoT controller. So this is the one on 192.168.111.51. Um, so this was our, our primary device. And we can confirm that by going to administration and looking at the settings for this particular uh, particular device. So if we look at our um, account information and our VM, you can see that uh, our IP address and uh, IP settings, and uh, this is our host name is set to the, the primary uh, primary device. So everything looks good and, and configured from there. So what we can do is go ahead and onboard an access point. So we'll quickly do that now. So you can see I have an AP that's trying to talk to this particular controller. We can see uh, that it's uh, it's configured. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and prove that AP. And uh, once that comes up, we'll configure a radio for, for Zigbee mode. So with primary controller now, we can see we have one access point that has been connected and onboarded, which we've just approved. And we can see that this particular device is now configured as a Zigbee uh, device. So what we'll do is we'll onboard a device the same as normal. So we'll onboard a uh, door sensor into our platform so that we're able to then connect and share that across our primary and secondary uh, controllers. So we'll onboard our device now.
put our Zigbee device into uh, join mode and our access point is now in scan and there's our device so we're just going to call this door 01 for the moment and stop scan there and we can go to our devices we can see our door sensor has been onboarded we can see our current configuration so if I open and close the door sensor we should see that the contact the zone cluster is now passed across so now as we uh, as we query the device and we open and close the door sensor we should see the state change accordingly okay so we now have a very primary controller is now configured and set up as needed so and we have our secondary controller you can see there's nothing currently configured on that no devices no access points um, but they're configured now correctly for uh, basic uh, operation uh, within a normal iot domain so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to log into our primary controller and we're going to configure that for n plus one operation okay so now we're going to ssh into our primary iot controller on 192.168.111.51 and we need to log in with our username and password and we use the credentials that we created at the uh, installation of the iot controller and the next thing we need to do is we need to configure the n plus one operation so we need to select option number five for n plus one we can see that it's currently disabled so we're going to enable by selecting option number one and then we're going to configure the primary controller so we're going to select option number one for start primary controller uh, the next thing we have here is that it's asking us to verify that we've configured everything correctly, which we have as part of it. And now it's asking us for the secondary controller's IP address. So this is going to be 192.168.111.52. And then additionally, it's asking for a preferred virtual IP address. So effectively, we need to make sure that we have these, these different IP addresses within the uh, network. And we're asking for the for the secondary virtual IP address so it has to be on the same subnet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 61 as the uh, primary controllers preferred virtual IP address okay so now it's going to say yes we're going to stop and start the service so yes we are going to start the IOT uh, n plus one service on this controller so this is going to take a little while to complete so we'll uh, we'll just leave that to run and we'll accelerate that uh, so you can see what it looks like at the end so here now we can see the system has correctly started and you can now see that the primary controller configuration started and also that the secondary controller configuration also started so in this uh, setup the iot controller the primary controller connected to the secondary controller and automatically started that service on the controller so there is no additional configuration options needed on the secondary server implicitly within the build okay so you can see after a few more minutes you can see now that the configuration is completed so the iot controller has now completed its configuration of the n plus one setup and has configured the, both the primary the secondary and finished all of the information exchange needed between the two devices so that now completes the initialization setup and provisioning of the n plus one between the primary and secondary controller so again we can hit return now return back to our uh, main console and hopefully now if we hit number five we should see that we have configured and set up the n plus one configuration and status it tells us that the mode is enabled the virtual ip address the uh, active primary controller which is the one which is the five one the secondary on five two and then the configuration sync controller is already active and uh, already operational everything looks so everything looks uh, operational expected so what we can do now is we can go into our dashboard within the iot controller and check that the dashboards are now correctly reporting the uh, iot controllers are in the correct modes so here now back at our primary controller an ip address of 151 you can now see that the n plus one is reporting as enabled within the primary controller so everything has started correctly the service has been configured and the iot controllers primary has now been enabled with n plus one support and again if we switch over to the secondary controller now so we can see 192.168.111.52 which is our secondary controller IP. again you can see n plus one has been enabled and started correctly so the two iot controllers now are communicating with each other and providing information to each other about how to configure and all the devices and all the gateways and all the time synchronization between the two controllers
and you can see after a period of time when you try and log in or access the secondary controller you get this screen telling you basically that there are no functions available so as it stands the secondary controller is now in a mode that uh, will not allow you to modify or configure anything everything has to be done through the primary uh, until the uh, until there is a failure in which case the secondary will take over so that completes our setup and configuration of n plus one for a primary and secondary server within the ruckus iot controller suite